Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. My name is Michael Smith, the National Consumer Education Manager of Genomi Canada, and thank you all for joining me today live on Wednesday for an Ask Genomo, Genomi HQ segment. And what will we be talking about today? Well, there's always so much. We get so many questions all on our Genomi Canada social media, Genomi HQ social media, uh, a lot on our Genomi Life blog, and especially our Genomi HQ YouTube channel. Oh my, I never anticipated so many questions and comments, you know, coming through the YouTube channel, because I load these presentations, these Instagram Live presentations on to our Genomi HQ YouTube channel. And actually, that's the very first thing we're going to talk about today on Ask Genomi HQ. And oh, there we are. And the question comes to why can't you film landscape when we view videos on the Genomi HQ YouTube channel? Well, uh, again, real videos, yes, are film landscape, but here, this is Instagram Live. So these have to be tall and skinny. That's the way Instagram wants it. They want you to view this on your phone and your iPad and all that. I screen record it and put it onto the YouTube channel. So that's because not everybody has Instagram. So I'm just trying to share more of the Genomi love. So that's why when you view these Ask Genomi HQ and Genomi's Magical Machine Mystery Tour presentations, when you view them on Genomi HQ YouTube, that's why they're tall and skinny. I am unfortunately can't do anything about that. But we're going to try more videos. So stay tuned. So yes. So today on Ask Genomi HQ, so that was one of them. And again, more real videos are coming down the pike. But, you know, last week I was at the Genomi Sewing and Learning Center and did a presentation on Genomi's Magical Machine Mystery Tour, which, yes, is on the Genomi HQ uh, YouTube channel. Again, it'll be tall and skinny, but you can still understand and, and listen to the presentation and still hopefully glean a lot of information. So, last week's Genomi's Magical Machine Mystery Tour was about the partner products such as these fabulous Aero sewing furniture. And we have all these fabulous Aero furniture, the sewing cabinets, the Aero chairs at the Genomi Sewing and Learning Center. So, if you need new furniture, you know, a more comfortable chair, you need sewing cabinets, uh, pressing surfaces, cutting tables, anything to make your sewing better, quicker, more enjoyable more organized uh, than Aero Sewing, you can check out the brand new beautiful aerosewing.ca site. So yes, Genomi Canada has partnered with Aero Products, so you can get all these fabulous Aero Products from your Genomi dealers. But now we realize, you know, a lot of dealers don't have the space to set up all these cutting tables and to have all these chairs and everything on display, so you can go to aerosewing.ca, type that in your browser, and then, oh, you've got all of the Aero catalog at your fingertips. So you can press, if you're looking for a sewing cabinet, sewing table, the fabulous chairs, the storage cabinets, cutting tables, or cutting tables, like the fabulous dingo cutting table that I have at the Genomi Sewing and Learning Center. Again, you can go to aerosewing.ca click on whatever the fabulous storage cabinets here. That's the cute little Kiwi storage cabinet that I showed again last week for Magical Machine Mystery Tour. Isn't that adorable? You've got all those drawers. The top two drawers are thread racks. They've got little pegs there to keep your threads organized. There's a little surface here that comes out, a fold-out, that you can put a little cutting uh, mat at, and then this is your pressing surface. Your iron and uh, ironing equipment can fit in that uh, bottom drawer there. It's all on casters. All the aero furniture is on casters. Move it around. Uh, makes it so easy, uh, so organized. Oh, look at that dingo cutting station. I have now two of these at the Genomi Sewing and Learning Center. Love it. So much you know, better to stay organized. And now again, then you don't have to worry, oh, my Genomi dealer doesn't have one on display. Oh, you'd like more information about it. You can go to, again, aerosewing.ca, click on all this partner product. Everything is in Canadian dollars, 
which is great. Now you may think, ooh, well, that's rather expensive. And again, but there's furniture for every budget. But the great thing is, again, you go to the Find a Dealer tab on the top here. So you can go on aerosewing.ca, learn about all the aero products, everything you need to keep your sewing room organized, then click on Find a Dealer. Here are all the lists of our Janome dealers. So then you contact whatever dealer is in your area. You can enter in your uh, postal code, for example, to find the dealers in your area. There's a little map of just in Ontario alone, our dealers. And then again, then you contact the dealer and say, hey, I was on that arrow sewing site. I saw that Dingo 2 cutting table. You know, can you order me one? Maybe they've got a special promotion going on in their store, but then you can check with your Janome dealer for whatever uh, presentations may be going on at the time. So that's really fabulous. Again, brand new, that aerosewing.ca site. They partnered with Janome, so you can find out all the information about all the aero sewing cabinets and everything, and then order them from your fabulous Janome dealer. So, that's because we got a lot of questions about those aero uh, cabinets from last week. So, I thought, perfect time to bring this up. So, another question we received recently were about needles. Always a hot-button issue, needles. Now, you know, uh, specifically, the question was, is there a Janome fine-tipped needle, fine-point needle for delicate fabrics like silk, for example? So, definitely, it's important for your results to uh, select the correct needle. So, we know we've got our most popular needle here. The three most popular are the blue tip needle, size 11, uh, blue tip up here, uh, size 11, that it's got a slightly more narrow shaft and a slightly smaller point, uh, a slightly rounded point as well. So great for like cotton knits, uh, great for embroidery as well. Won't really leave like big holes in the fabric. So this is a kind of general all-purpose needle. Uh, the one I use the most though as my all-purpose needle is this size 14 uh, red tip that it's got a bigger shaft, a little thicker shaft, so great to uh, sew through multiple layers. Uh, size 14, it's got a larger eye, so you can use some thicker threads with it. Again, a sharper point, great to go through all those thicker layers. If you've got really dense embroidery, uh, go ahead and switch to this red tip uh, size 14 needle. It'll really stand up going through all that, you know, stabilizer and all those dense stitches. So they work out really, really well. Now, our other most popular needle, oh, these purple tip size 14 with that flared cobra head that helps eliminate the skip stitches. Uh, it helps separate the fibers of the fabric so the needle thread and the bottom uh, bobbin thread intersect more readily in the center of your layers as you wish. Uh, perfect needle to use for uh, free motion quilting, ruler quilting, even straight line quilting, uh, a quilting of all kind. Uh, this purple tip needle really works wonderfully. So again, those are our three most common, but yes, Janomia is needles of all kinds leather needles, denim needles, and yes, these size 9 needles. Very fine. Very fine uh, shaft and very fine point. Now you'll see, as I get in, ooh, really close here, on the left here is the size 9, Janome size 9 needle, and on the right is the Janome size 14 red tip needle. Look at how much finer that size 9 needle is on the left. Not only the shaft of the needle and how very fine. Look at how delicate that is. And again, very small point, uh, very small eye. So again, this uh, size 9 needle would be perfect for your silks and all your fine, uh, delicate fabric, really fine uh, cotton batiste. And again, it's a slightly shorter needle as well. You'll see that the uh, red tip needle on the right is a longer needle. The size uh, 9 on the left is slightly shorter. Uh, and again, very, very fine. So when, so again, perfect for your fine fabrics. Now, when you're going to be using, though, these finer needles, 
our Janome needle threaders, automatic needle threaders, uh, and manual needle threaders are designed for a size 10 needle and above. So that size 9 needle, you cannot use the needle threader built into your machine. Instead, you're going to want to, everybody should have one of these manual Janome needle threaders are fabulous. There are uh, two fold here, two purposes. Uh, one side holds the needle actually in place. So it acts as your third hand as you're positioning the needle in place. And then you're going to tighten that needle clamp through a uh, screw. It'll help you hold this into place uh, as well. When you change needles, then you can put the other needle in position. If it's still a good needle, you don't want to throw it away. Uh, go ahead and just keep it here. That way you keep track of that needle. But the other side of, ooh, the needle threader here, there's even an arrow that points up. This is how to orient this needle threader. You're basically, if this were your um, strand of thread here, you're going to loop it over this little holder here, and then you're going to position this and push this against the needle, and you see that wire that comes out. So when this thread is in the little groove there, and then you push that wire, and you see that thread is going to go right in the eye of the needle. So this manual Janome needle threader comes in a blister pack from your Janome dealer. It's ideal to use, again, for that size 9 needle with that really fine eye. Or if you're going to use a really heavier thread, like a 30 weight or above, then you need to use this needle threader and thread that needle by hand as opposed to use the automatic needle threader built into your machine. So you'll definitely have good results that way. So all your Janome needles, again, you can get from your Janome dealer. Oh, and Sandra Gilmer's here. Hello, I hope you're doing good. So that is another question. We always get questions about needles. Oh, another thing that we got questions about, oil. What can I oil my machine? This is something else we always get questions about. Now, oil, do not oil your machine unless your instruction manual tells you. In the mechanical machines, for example, they often come with a little vial of oil and they give you explicit instructions how to oil and where to oil. Same with like with our AT2000D serger. Comes with a little vial of sewing machine oil and they give you in explicit instructions how to oil it. Most of the time for these fancy needles or fancy uh, machines like the fabulous Janome Continental M17 here, we're letting our Janome dealer oil the machine. We really don't want to get into oiling these sophisticated electronics. But there is something that we can do uh, that is not a problem. So oil, good quality sewing machine oil. You know, Janome even has their own branded uh, sewing machine oil. The, again, you can get that from your Janome dealer. I love these uh, kinds that have this uh, little telescoping uh, end here, because again, you can just turn it and it can go exactly where you need it. So these are great. Again, just get them from your Janome dealer, the uh, sewing machine oil, good quality sewing machine oil. So Again, your instruction manual, you want to follow as far as uh, oiling goes. But here in your more sophisticated electronic machines, the only place you're going to oil, and let me remove ooh, our one-touch needle plate here, the only place you're ever going to oil the machine is right there, down in this little spot. Take out your bobbin holder and there is a little wick in here. It is not a piece of felt, or it is a piece of felt, it is not lint. <laughs> and you're going to, ooh, if I can get in really close here, there, that little wick, it's sort of like, again, like a little piece of felt. It's not lint, so do not remove it. All of this around here, ooh, it's time I clean my bobbin area here. All of that clean away, but this, no, there's a little wick in there, and that way you put one drop of oil in that wick, and it's just going to slowly start going then down into the bobbin area, down here under the bobbin holder, and that's going to keep everything lubricated under there. So if you're sewing along, you're doing lots of sewing, and if you find, well, my bobbin area sounds a little little noisy, it's a little, you know, chatty, uh, then maybe put a little drop of sewing machine oil there and that'll help quiet things down. It'll be a little smoother. But again, overall, you do that every, you know, six months or so and you're fine. Uh, for the most part, we recommend uh, bringing your Janome machine into your 
dealer for service about once a year. If you're sewing a lot, maybe twice a year. And again, just let them do it so you don't have to worry about it. But if you wanted to do it yourself, that's again the only place you would oil. Uh, other than that, in these electronic machines, you're not going to be oiling anywhere, <laughs> just in that bobbin area. I wrote a uh, blog actually on Janome Life blog and included a video that says, don't forget the bobbin area. That's the title of the blog. So you can go back to Janome Life blog and read, don't forget the bobbin area, and you can uh, see how to oil that bobbin area, and it makes it really simple and easy. So you want to use good quality sewing machine oil. You're not using cooking oil, vegetable oil, no motor oil, no three-in-one oil. Good quality sewing machine oil, and again, just get it from your Janome dealer so you know you've got the right stuff. Oh, Maul is here. Hello. I hope you're having a wonderful day. So that is good to know. Now, the other uh, question that we got is about, oh, USB sticks. So many of our, you know, computerized machines, we have USB ports here on our Continental. Ooh, here on our Continental M17, we have two USB uh, ports here uh, behind the screen. Uh, Membercraft 15,000, we had two USB ports. Uh, most other machines, you know, Continental M7, they have one. And when, what USB do we use? And oh, there's so much uh, information about it. And again, go back to previous Genome Life blogs, lots of information about using USB. USB sticks in your machine. Uh, Anne Hine from Genome America does a lot about the USB sticks and how to transfer files to the USB stick from your computer and then how to transfer it from the USB stick to your machine. She's got lots of that in the Genome Sewing Machines uh, Facebook page, the Artistic Digitizer Facebook group, the Continental Club Facebook group. There, so there's lots of information how to and about what uh, USB sticks to use. Uh, but basically, I like keeping the USB stick, this is 13 gigabytes, uh, or 16 gigabytes and smaller. I don't like using these big USB sticks. There's no reason to. For the most part, the USB stick, think of it as a car. You're transporting information from one uh, computer from one vehicle to another, basically. And this is just your mode of transportation. So you're taking a design uh, from your computer to bring it to your machine. You don't need the huge USB stick. Save that to back up all your files. But this USB stick, again, is just like a little car, a little economy car. <laughs> it's just going to take information from one device to another. So again, for me, 16 gigabytes, that's more than enough. And you get them readily. I just got mine from Staples, but you get them from any office supply, whatever. So you plug that into your machine. So on my computer, let's say, I have downloaded and created some stitches in the Stitch Composer software that comes with the Continental M17 here, comes with Continental M7 and the Skyline S9 and Memorycraft 15000. Lots of our machines come with the Stitch Composer software. So let's say I've created some stitches on my computer with my Stitch Composer software. I've downloaded them to the USB stick here, and now I want to retrieve my files. So, oh, plug this in to your machine, and you'll notice the machine, oh, there, it's thinking. Yes, it's thinking. It's reading that USB stick. So now you want to retrieve your files. You want to bring them into the machine. So we can go to this icon down here at the bottom, the little folder with the uh, arrow going out, which means we want to bring a file out of that folder. We've already saved it into the folder in our computer, and now we're, we're getting that file out. So when we're trying to retrieve a file, where, where it says open file, well, where is that file? Was it in the memory of our machine, uh, indicated by that machine icon? Now you'll see over here, the machine ultimately has 64 megabytes of memory that we can store things, store designs on too. Uh, generally, I really do not like storing things on the machine, in the machine's memory, because that gives the machine, you know, a, a lot to think of. There's still already so many, you know, 850 stitches built into the machine and, uh, you know, 1,230 embroidery designs. That's a lot of information for the machine to process. I don't want to save anything to the machine's memory, 
because then that's just going to slow it down even more. So I just like saving everything to the USB stick, bring it in that way, stitch the design, stitch the embroidery design, and then get rid of it. I don't like leaving it, you know, in the machine. So we then, so we know it's not in the machine memory. So it's on our one of two USB sticks. So I know it's in uh, port number one. If I select port number two, it's telling me, hey, you didn't insert a flash drive there. So again, the machine is helping you, <laughs> doing some thinking for you. So it's in USB stick, you know, number one, USB port number one. So now we have folders. In Janome uh, software, we have two folders, two parent folders, the embroidery folder and the ordinary sewing folder. So in this case, because my Continental M17 is both an embroidery machine and an ordinary sewing machine, then I've got those two parent folders, the embroidery folder, and then we have this subfolder, the EMBF folder. Then in ordinary sewing, we have a subfolder of ORDF. So when I click that, oh look, I already have designs saved. Now the STX is the Stitch Composer software stitches that I've created, again, on my computer. Uh, for more about Stitch Composer, again, check out Janome Life Blogs and uh, on the landing page of the Skyline S9 on Janome.ca, there's an exercise there all on Stitch Composer. So you can find out more information. Again, it comes with a number of machines and we can create our own stitches basically. So when I've created that, I saved it to my folder and then here the STX and then it, there, if I want, oh, I don't want that folder there. I'll go to this one. Oh, look, I've created some more. I don't want that one. <laughs> I want that one. Oh, the name exists. Maybe I'll select this one. No, it wants me. Where can I select that one? There we go. There. So I've got my cute uh, design. Yes, I already have that. So here are the created stitches that I made. In fact, this one here is my name. Oh, that's why. Because I, I had it in my uh, selection, stitch combination. So here, created stitches, CS. This is from Stitch Composer. So here I created my name, stitched it out. Isn't that beautiful? Now, the cool thing about even these Stitch Composer stitches, here it is at nine millimeters, since I have nine millimeters wide in my machine, but oh yes, we can alter them. They become like regular stitches that we can adjust the stitch width and stitch length. So here I've adjusted the width and made it smaller. So isn't that very fun? I love Stitch Composer software. It is so fun. So again, we can create our own stitches. In this case, with Stitch Composer, again, we save them to the USB. We bring them into the machine. Again, that little file folder with the arrow going out. And here are our stitches. So that's how we can retrieve a design that we uh, select. Again, the folder going out. And typically, again, things are saved in the ORDF folder. But we can also save things from the machine. So in this case here, this whole combination of uh, my other designs, the apple and the star and the little flower, and then hear the words sweet love, and even my stitch composer, uh, Mike, you know, is all created together. We can combine stitches in the machine. And this stitch combination we can do in many, many machines. Uh, it's available in so many machines. So when I scroll here, I'll just use words, one of the new categories in our CM17. Now, some of these words are built into other machines, but now here in the CM17, they're actually a whole separate category. So they're much easier to find this way. So when we have our regular uh, selection of our stitch, in this case, you know, sweet, then there every word is sweet, 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 the whole line. But with our program key down here, the three little hearts we select, and now we've got the heart and the spade and the diamond, with meaning we can select and combine many of our stitches together. So if we want, oh, I love doing stitch, sweet, love. Uh, but then it's like, oh, maybe I want a little more space in between. We can move our cursor. And again, this is a... Uh, 
the same steps you would do on multiple machines have this function of combining stitches. So I want a space here between stitch and sweet. So I then select my space. And then now I want a space between sweet and love. Whoops, I want to delete that and go here, a space there. So isn't that perfect? I want to go and delete that other space, delete. So there, sweet space, or stitch, space, sweet, space, love. So that's very cute. So now I want to save this combination. We ultimately have, if I hit this little uh, magnifier, we have a hundred stitch combinations here in the CM17. Uh, other machines, we have 50 uh, st stitch combinations uh, that we can save. So isn't that amazing? So in this case, I just have my five there. So now I want to save this. So we can hit the folder with the arrow going in, meaning we want to save. So, oops, I hit my settings. <laughs> there. So now, again, where do we want to save that? Do we want to save it to our machine, as highlighted in blue, the memory of our machine? Again, we do have 64 megabytes, so we could save it to our machine. But me personally, I'd rather save it to my USB stick number one. And there's our icon USB stick, so we know that's where it's going to be saved. Uh, we need to create a new name in order to save this file. So hit your little pencil. We can even do uppercase, lowercase. I will just do Stitch Sweet Love. So SSL is how I'm going to name this. And hit OK. There we go. And then where do I want it within my USB stick there? I want it in my ordinary sewing folder there. So here's the other things that I have saved. I hit OK. And then now when I go to the folder with the arrow out, I want to retrieve that file, go back into my ordinary sewing folder, and there it is. That SSL is what I saved. There is our stitch. So simple, so easy to do. Now sometimes, though, it happens... Let's see. Oh, we'll just even do this lifestyle uh, category, which is cute. So let's just save a combination. Oh, here and here and here and here and here, whatever. <laughs> so we're saving files. It doesn't matter what it is. We're saving a file. So we're going to go back to, again, the file folder with the arrow in. And then again, where are we saving it? I want to save it to my USB stick. I have to rename it. Uh, in this case, I'll just say test2 and then hit OK. And then we're so, usually we're in such a big hurry. Yep, I've, I've renamed it. OK, I'm just going to hit OK. Yep, it's saved. I'm done. Now I go back to retrieve it, that folder with the arrow out. And again, we're back. Yes, we know it's in the ordinary uh, or we know it's in the USB stick. And then, oh, it's in the ordinary sewing folder because that's where we save everything. <gasps> Wait, I have a test one, but I saved it as test two. Where is my file? And then you panic and you panic. <laughs> Ultimately, this arrow is your friend. This up arrow is your friend. So when you go into a folder, in this case, and you think, where is my design? Let's go back with that up arrow, and we'll see. Now I've got open file one of two. So this up arrow, this back arrow, takes you back a screen. And now when I go back, I thought it was in that ordinary sewing folder, but then again, now it says one of two. So if I scroll, there is my test two. So what I neglected to do on purpose. <laughs> so I could, you know, teach you here in that, again, I didn't select this file folder as I normally would. Sometimes it's easy to overlook a step. Well, now not to worry that now Genomi uh, allows you to save your files. They don't have to be in that folder as they used to. So 
Oh, Evelyn, it's wonderful. Again, if you're late, not to worry. You can always go back to review and IGTV. And yes, these will be loaded on Genome HQ YouTube on the um, YouTube channel. And again, they will be tall and skinny there when you view it, but you can still see the information and hopefully learn uh, the information there, which is great. Uh, so again, normally that you're selecting the file folder, but if you forget to it's okay, then again, use that up arrow and go back to try to find your design. Genomi now lets you save uh, designs and information without putting it in a folder. Uh, when I use that up arrow again, then I go back to my original, you know, parent folders here. And, oh, I don't see anything. I'll go into the ordinary sewing folder. And again, normally we're in that ORDF folder for designs. But in this case, again, look up here. I've got one of two. And then I scroll through. There is my design. So not a problem. If you wanted to create a new folder in which to save things, then we've got that folder icon there with the little plus. And again, now we could create a new folder. So to help you stay organized, do you want a Stitch Composer folder? And all your stitches that you create in Stitch Composer will go there. If you've got, uh, you know, designs that you purchased on the internet, and then you will write that, you know, purchase designs, you know, whatever. So our designs that you create yourself, that JCS is uh, Genomi Combined Stitches, is what I think that stands for. <laughs> so then your combined stitches. So maybe you have a category of just, a, or even created stitches, Genomi Created Stitches, uh, but you're really combining these. So maybe that's your category. Now the same will work, the same process will work if we go very quickly into embroidery mode. So now I've switched to embroidery, and now I want to, again, retrieve a design that you've uh, created in your embroidery editor software or in Artistic Digitizer or, you know, whichever, your embroidery link uh, app for the CM17 here. Maybe you purchased a design from the internet, and again, you've saved it to that USB. Now you're going to bring it in with that file folder with the um, arrow out. And again, where is that design? Was it saved to the memory of the machine? No, I saved it to the USB stick. Now again, this embroidered the EMBF folder. If I use that arrow button, again, back our parent folder is embroidery, EMB, and then EMBF. And I see, oh, okay, my design was saved in that folder. I've got another folder, me personally, layout. But you'll see I've got one of four screens here. So I have quite a bit saved so I could scroll through. If it wasn't in that, uh, you know, separate folder, then I can just keep scrolling through to find my designs this way. Once you select what you want, there's our mini duckling design, a free design on the genomi.ca website. And then again, with the uh, editing capabilities of our embroidery machines, you can uh, duplicate this design. I've increased the sizes here. So they're different size, sort of like a mom and a little baby, a dad and a little baby. So again, you can edit those designs. So this mini duckling is a free design on genomi.ca. The Jeff embroidery file is there. You know, save it on a USB stick, bring it into your machine. There's the mini duckling scissors that we created this design. Tanya, our fabulous um, former parts, notions, and accessories coordinator, created that uh, artwork to go along with these mini duckling scissors. You know how I love those. So that's how you can easily find and your designs and then again save them to the USB stick within your machines. And again, the, the, the same process will work in all machines that have the USB stick. So, do do do. Uh, let me flip. Oh, there we go. Okay, fabulous. So thank you everyone for joining me today. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Enjoy the rest of August while we have it. And September is right around the corner. But I will see you all next week for a, ooh, Janome's Magical Machine Mystery Tour. And what will we be talking about? I don't know. It's a mystery, so you must tune in. So thank you everyone for joining me today and have a fabulous day. Bye. <laughs>